Hello and welcome again to All My Art and Soul. This week, um, I'm taking you on a new adventure uh, of exploring color. And as I'm exploring uh, a new process in discovering um, new palettes, um, here's this one with uh, Cad, Cad Red Deep, Hansa Yellow, and Unbleached Titanium of course, black. Uh, I might use white here. I, I don't think I added it in. But um, so at the beginning, I'm gathering some collage papers that uh, I think will look good or, or that feel right. And as you can see, I just took a piece of cardstock in half and I intend to paste it into this uh, spread and um, I'm really liking uh, what happened between the Hansa Yellow Medium and Black. And uh, I have not really been mixing colors as much as I could. Not that I should. Um, getting a bit tired of my uh, color palette. And um, if you don't mind, leave a, call, leave a comment um, what kinds of colors do you use mostly and what would you like to learn about color and color mixing? Um, so after create, after messing around and just, just adding some, uh, changing the value, adding white, titanium, just those few little times, um, that's where it's going to be pasted in. And then I thought, okay, let's put in uh, the names of those colors and... Uh, a little section and then see what I can do underneath there on that big page while on the right I plan to use the favorite colors from this palette that I discover and mix and just create a uh, an abstract. Uh, in the future though I think um, for the purpose of really learning more about color I'm going to use um, less collage papers, and of course, more paint. Now, I might use the odd little piece, but uh, the whole purpose of this is to um, think out of the box, trying to expand my, um, my knowledge of color and maybe shapes as I go. So I just don't want to... Um, I really like my horizontal uh, sections that I use. I'm definitely going to keep that, but I think I want to do some more paint mixing. So as you can see, I'm starting right away with mixing, which I would not normally do, and it's time to get at it. Loving the warms, um, and, and I'm not planning a thing. And I know that yellow tape, it's a frog tape, by the way, and it comes in a, in a plastic package. So I guess it doesn't dry out. It has a much longer shelf life. Um, it's amazing. It's a little more expensive than the blue and the green, I noticed. But uh, especially up here in Canada, where, you know, everything's expensive. And uh, especially art supplies. So um, I know some of you have been asking about that. Um, I had to take it off later on because the electric yellow was driving me crazy with all these warm tones. And then stick around in the video because there's a point where I come to and I discover that I really don't like this color palette. It's missing something, of course. And um, just trying to stick with monochromatic, but these are not my favorites. Anyway, these are the colors I chose, and it's just a time to just stick with it and see what I can do with them. So putting up that really strong yellow on the top, um, I didn't really let layers dry so much here until the end of the first session, and, and that's where this takes a change, and I rediscover some color mixing on the left hand on the left side of this spread underneath that little um, cardstock. So I have several pieces to keep in here um, on this for this particular palette as a reference. And just thinking of shapes, just doing things that I'm not used to. And I don't care if it's ugly because this isn't even a spread. That's why I, I mean a, an art journal page. 
And that's why I don't want to, you know, I don't even want to waste my collage papers on this, on these. But I really like the nice clean edge that the tape leaves. So I think I'll be doing that. Maybe not. So, um, interesting pinks and oranges. I know I like pinks and oranges. I'm not sure I like these particular colors. But um, also experimenting with opaque uh, layers, translucent layers. Um, I know that there's an orange there um, on the palette that you see, but I decided, no, nope, I'm going to mix up my orange and uh, just see how that goes. And as I add more black, um, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, wow, you know, mixing a different kind of dark would look so much better. And um, I'm not really liking this particular shape or the, the lines in that arc. So then I'm bringing in some collage papers. I'm really liking the change of white on black and then black on white together uh, with these circles. And of course, that was made with a little piece of copper pipe. If you've seen other videos, take a look at the ones before in all of my abstract art journal pages. I have lots of them to go through. And that one with the uh, ochre on it, uh, I, would, I would have thought it would have really went well, but went with it, but it just didn't for some reason. And I have to think about why. Um, probably the clash or my personal taste between the ochre and the yellow, who knows. So bringing in... Um, uh, the black paper that you saw before is the scrapbooking pages that you buy for scrapbook, just plain black. I think you get a set of 10 or 20 in them. They're slightly, they're thicker than regular paper, thinner than cardstock. Here is the um, deli wrap paper, which is still, um, and it might be tracing paper, I'm not sure. Because um, I thought the deli wrap paper was a little more, uh, it had a little more strength to it. I have to be careful when I'm uh, putting it down on top because if I push too hard with the brush, it can tear. So I'm learning to put the, high, the, the medium down on the surface first. And why I'm choosing this one is I love the marks and that it's translucent. And I'm going to see what's underneath. In the future, as I've said before, um, I'm going to use less of this paper, though if you stick to the end, it really turns out really well, you know, for just an exploration piece. Um, and I also add oil pastel uh, to, the, to the lot, um, sticking with the warm browns and oranges, and even a little bit of orange Posca marker for some different marks. So I wanted, I didn't want two neat rows. I wanted some half circles, some full circles, and I'm just going to uh, place those down. I'm not gonna commit to them yet, um, but I know they need to be in the lower third of the page. So as this page builds layer by layer, um, it's, it just becomes better and better. So um, I hope um, a lot of you who are following uh, my channel, by the way, thank you very much. I know I've not, I've not added a lot of videos and tutorials yet to my Facebook page, if you are on my Facebook page, but this one and more color exploration and moving through the layers are coming up um, next for my Facebook group. So you will see those first. They'll just be really short tutorials and maybe some tips during the week. <clears throat> so just experimenting and just finding what you like and definitely what you don't like. Um, here's this taupey sort of tone uh, going over that bright, bright yellow, which I really like the yellow, but probably not in its pure, 
you know, right out of the tube. It, uh, uh, and I know I've been using a lot of yellow in my previous uh, abstract uh, collages, the 12 by 12 on mm -hmm. panel, which you need to watch, which was the video before this, and also the two or three, and that was in four different parts, because we know how many layers uh, these abstracts take to achieve that wonderful history underneath. So um, that's my new motto. If I don't like what's happening, it just becomes a new underlayer. And even if you do like something, uh, let some of it go, uh, keep some of it, maybe obliterate the whole thing. Uh, and whatever that texture uh, happens from, say, pieces of collage or things that you've totally covered up, um, maybe don't use op an opaque layer. Uh, try different types of layers. Maybe just do straight marks, um, open shapes, closed shapes, lines over that layer, and then it'll just push it back enough for you to react to the next move. Uh, that's basically what I've been learning, and we only learn it by doing it and showing up and, of course, pushing our limits. And that's what I'm trying to do in this next series, which I'm going to call Exploring Color with um, Abstract Journaling. And the purpose, the end goal for this is to become more knowledgeable with my color mixing and before I go on and just have a little more confidence before I start um, uh, cre using much larger canvases. Like I said, I've got two five foot by six foot canvases in my studio. They've been sitting far too long and um, this spring coming up, uh, is the plan. So, like I said, that tour, and I don't know. Oh, I end up taking it all off. Okay, good, good. And then I just use another piece because these are big pieces and am much more careful. And I'm also considering the scale of things a little versus a lot. Of another value, another color, uh, marks, etc. And that's why on the, the left hand side, uh, which um, we'll be going into as soon as we finish uh, this first session of this particular page, before I bring in another color, which it really needed for me. Um, I didn't mind these, but it was just too warm. Uh, it just needed some, it needed a punch of blue. And of course, my favorite blue at this point, um, besides Payne's Gray, is the turquoise blue from Liquitex. I also love Teal by Golden. Uh, those two colors, and of course, Manganese blue, which is so transparent, very expensive, but wonderful. Um, yes, this piece is going on much better, probably because I, um, I had enough um, high gloss gel, uh, heavy gel on the page. And I'm thinking too, for this lighter paper, I should uh, probably the uh, regular uh, uh, medium gloss, uh, medium gel, either matte or gloss would probably work fine. And I have lots of that. So I should really uh, test both. It spreads quicker and um, of course there's more water in it. So what might that do to this type of paper? I'm not sure yet. So finally coming down to a decision because it's feeling right. There's enough black in there, in that area. And um, if again, you stay tuned to the end, uh, you'll see what I do with the oil pastels with line and the Posca markers also with line. Uh, bringing in and thinking of those differences. So really on top of exploring color, which is the main intention, which is the number one intention here, um, I'm just seeing how things go together and what I like. 
and um, having lots of fun because I am not putting that that stress of that outcome. Um, and I think I could even do a better job by not having to have this pretty page on the right um, along with those colors. So uh, stay tuned for the upcoming explore, Exploring Color videos and who knows what we'll come up with. Okay, I'm liking the lightness of that, but it's too light. So I end up finding, um, which I don't have a lot left, uh, of course, the newsprint paper, which is already a beautiful neutral. There it is right there. So I'm liking it. I don't really commit to it right away, but I tear it down to a smaller size, much smaller size, I think a third of what you just saw there. And um, I like to put it in a different direction. Uh, that's okay, but it's just, I don't know, manufactured kind of look. Um, I really like that effect, but I like using those in uh, very small quantities and small sizes. Again, that is uh, Nickel Azo Gold on the deli wrap paper. And I've just used the brush directly and just experimented with different crisscross marks. And as you can see, I'm circling that area uh, of the color palette on the left because I'm really liking the lighter values of oranges and all peaches and all of those beautiful marks. So that piece does end up going in there eventually. <laughs> and, um, oh, here comes some more yellow. Interesting. Oh, I'm mixing it with red because I want to stick with that particular orange and um, experiment with the different saturations of yellow and more yellow, less yellow, more red in it. So just bringing a, um, an area, horizontal area right across. And I do like it. It relates to it, but it's yet it's different enough. And um, so there's a lot to show here. I still think I could move this page over to the left more so you can see more of my palette and probably bring the camera out a little uh, so we can see the whole thing. So um, that's definitely going to change for next week. And really liking... Um, I do believe, I think that was India ink, or it could have just been paint that I just used a brush and it's just stream writing. Uh, I miss that. Um, I'm planning to make an abstract series of, and all the shapes are all going to re uh, relate to text, uh, letters and numbers, and um, layer by layer by layer, who knows what will... Uh, will come up with. Here's the orange. This is the deeper orange Posca pen of the, what is it? 24, the 24 pack. But there's still another color range that I want to get. Okay. So today, um, unfortunately, I am using my phone with iMovie to create this. And I don't know if some of you are getting the glitchy, uh, the glitchy thing going on with iPad Pro and iMovie. That was from the very latest update. And all my videos that I upload and edit are just glitching out like crazy. So um, I just thought I'd mention if there's any uh, difference in quality, I'm still using the same microphone um, so there really shouldn't be. But uh, leave a comment if you're having the same issues. I uh, contacted Apple Help and got somebody right away, and they're, they're aware of the issue, but I don't know how extensive this is. So as you can see, um, I moved through an ugly phase there. Um, so the more ugly phases I move through in the future for say a, a big canvas or anything, I know 
things that can happen after that, um, different choices. It's never going to be the same, but you know that, oh, okay, that's okay because, you know, uh, this, this is really, this can happen. Or, ooh, look at what happened. You know, I just love the unpredictability of the intuitive process. So that piece of newsprint, which was ruled with my brayer, with leftover paint, um, really, I really love it. And of course, I love my, you know, my central um, cruciform uh, composition. It's always really cool. Liking how uh, those layers are playing together. Yes, um, there's another uh, photograph from the, the, an old book uh, of um, different images that I like, but I didn't want to use it in this. I wanted to save it for, uh, that's a whole other series that I've been working on. Um, it's called, uh, and it's going to be called Navigating Uncertainty. So yeah, we're all in it together, everybody. We just have to keep on navigating. <laughs> so I love this because these circles were really wide apart and it's just a single row and it's black on a semi-transparent and the orange is showing up underneath. And also I like how I went over that piece of paper or a collage piece in the middle. So a lot of overlapping and hiding and history is building. So, um, and I know text had to fit here somewhere, but uh, I will just keep a note and keep that in mind for uh, another page. This was the one that I used for the previous 12 by 12 uh, panel for my uh, part four series. So uh, make sure to check that out. And uh, I really should leave a link uh, for that video, but uh, you just need to go on my YouTube channel. And uh, I think now this will be the 89th video that I have up. And I notice they're getting much longer, but I hope they're getting better. Um, that's, that's, uh, that's my job too, to provide um, really good content for you, but it has to have purpose for me as an artist. So, <clears throat> as you can see, I let that dry. And of course, my go-to was this circle, which in the end, you can see it faded and it takes on, um, actually, I do like the white version. Um, I think I would have liked it more if it was thinner, not so thick and heavy, but that works too. And I, I know I've used this a lot in my designs, in my abstract pages. So this is where I was not satisfied with that color palette. And I'm, I'm showing you again the same colors that I've used. Um, the Cadmium Deep, the Hansa Yellow Medium, the ti Unbleached Titanium, and here's the Turquoise Blue. And I'm pointing to those lighter values because I know um, the lighter values of this blue are really going to complement um, this palette. So um, I'm going to just put in um, these little rectangles of color for a reference in the future. And I know it's sort of difficult to see the really true colors under my lights. And I know you can see the reflection on my piece of glass, which I use as a palette. And maybe I will change that type of palette for these videos too, just so there's less reflection. Yes, I think I will. It is all a learning process, which I thoroughly enjoy. So as I continue to just write down and um, you should too, if you plan to um, do the same, follow along. And don't worry about the work on the right, it having to be so much of a abstract collage page um, because the thinking is all about color. So I'm, I'm holding it a little closer to the lens so you can really see. And the wet paint is reflecting, but that's okay. And of course, putting in the white 
and then I'll put it in the black. So because there'll be a lot of time pa uh, that passes by and that I'll have to go, oh yeah, I remember this. Or when I go searching for um, some different color mixing ideas, this will be it. Um, I thought of keeping a binder like our other artists use, but um, I'm really liking the, this mixed media paper and keeping a spread because uh, these pages are for me and I don't really need to worry. Uh, but maybe for some crazy reason, a piece really turns out really cool. Who knows? I can scan it and use it in my all my other products if you have not gone and looked at my website, at my shop. And uh, that's what I like to do. I like to take my abstract designs and create all over print products with them. Uh, I'm just learning how to do that. And of course, getting really, really good high quality pixelated images for those but uh, that's a whole other uh, side so here's that wonderful wonderful deep orange and I've added a little black to it and it really really um, made it um, that much darker really liking that so I thought okay so what's the next well looking at uh, putting beside it of course red and blue uh, and this is a slight green so I sort of desaturated it a bit with the titanium and the white and as I add more white to both of these uh, some really nice colors are starting to happen that's the sandy tone that I've been looking for uh, because I am planning also uh, some neutral paintings, uh, mostly white, neutral to white, uh, which is a really big change for me going uh, with all the dark. Uh, but I really still want to start with that under layer of a dark, um, warm tone. It might be raw sienna, it might be ochre, and it might even be an orange. So uh, I'll experiment with the effects. And so doing some more mixing, adding some blue to that orange to see what would, might happen. And I needed a little bit more yellow. And then on top of that, I did uh, mix it again, but it turned out a little brighter. And this one, here is that beautiful chocolate brown so it's that uh, cad red hansa yellow 50 50 with black and what a neat neat color and i don't usually use these colors but i love how they all go together um what a beautiful range and you'll see after I finish mixing these squares or rectangles on this page, uh, we'll move back to that abstract uh, journal page that I started, and we'll add the contrasting blue uh, colors and values to it. And then all of a sudden, it just comes to life. So here's some green, which I don't know why. I don't use green. Green isn't my thing, um, but I'm really liking what's happening here. Um, different tones of green, how they um, add a really subtle contrast to the turquoise. So I can see where I might, uh, that might really be really cool. And really lightening up to get more of a sage that goes with the very, very light blue. Um, really nice. So adding some blacks putting them next to each other, next to a red. I probably could have experimented with uh, the different oranges, but I have some room left, so um, I can always go back and see if I can mix them again. Um, using a different cardstock piece and uh, maybe just mixing those colors before I go and use them on a, on a new piece of work.
or a new abs, a new page, a new art journal page. So I noticed when I added just a touch of that red, cad red, it's such a cools it right down and darkened it right up. Really like that effect or that color, I mean, it's not an effect. And this is what I like. Uh, at the beginning, you saw the, um, the triangle. Then I made a, a four square version and it just took forever to do. I thought, oh, this, this isn't as useful as I thought it might be. So I'm really liking this way better. So uh, let me know in the comments what you like, how you like to explore with different color palettes and the values, of course, the white and the black. And let me know if this way is a good way and share maybe what you, what you find is a better way. Uh, we all love to learn. It's great to share and we learn from each other. I love this combination with the blue. It is so nice. It's a, I would call it taupe, very much a taupe. It's more of a pinky taupe. And uh, adding more white or titan buff or unbleached titanium to it would look pretty cool too. So just finishing up, making sure I've, um, tried as many different colors as I can for now with this one sitting and um, really liking the light blues, the light sage, the coffee colored tones. And this isn't even, it, you know, if, if I use raw umber alone, mixing that, um, it's even simpler, but look what you can get by just adding uh, maybe a little blue to it. Um, so I am going to use raw umber in the next palette that I explore. And of course, probably uh, a Payne's gray and maybe the same red, maybe a different red. Oh, there's a beautiful orange. And orange is oh, orange and blue, my favorite combination. So um, I really want to continue using that that's a real fiery orange compared to the taupe. Let me know what, um, what colors that you see me create today that you like the best and how you might use them in your work. And I do love to read all comments. Sometimes I take a while. It depends what I'm doing. Um, this isn't the only, the only thing I do. Um, I do wish, and my big dream is to do this full time. <laughs> There's so much to paint and such little time. Okay, so really using that black and red, what a beautiful deep purple it makes. It's very opaque, and you know, it depends what you're looking for. Um, you know, changing your blues around, your opacity, and just learning from that. And after this dries, I will probably go over and write a few more notes on this page, just so I remember. So, I'm just showing you, and of course, I'm not lying that down on the table. Oh yeah, so I opened it. It's going to dry, and now I'm going to show you... Um, by circling the values, and there comes the turquoise blue. So it's so needed it. And I'm loving the stronger value with the stronger orange, and of course the real lighter blue on the top because it so, goes so nicely with the uh, neutral colors. And that black circle, I don't know what got into me. I just thought, oh, let's use black, it, let's use whatever. And um, so that ends up get, getting painted over anyway. And so here comes some of that lighter, 
value that I experimented with, and it's very opaque, I notice. And as you can see, I had to take off the tape. So I'm being very careful, you know, just to make maintain a nice clean edge, even though this is just an experimental page. And mixing up some more blue. And there's the there's the uh, the tone that I'm trying to get to. See that that's what can happen. Okay, how did I how did I mix that? I almost I forgot. I didn't add blue to it. I mean red. So I don't know what I'm doing. Um, no. So then I I don't know. So I know it's dark. So I put it down there in the bottom because it's uh, really. So I'm pointing to it again, and I start it again. I thought okay. It was the titanium, the teal, and some white. That's it. And maybe some, some, yes. So what you might want to do, which would be best seeing this now in hindsight, is mix a bit of the orange, which was 50-50, and then add that into the blue. In order for your, uh, uh, if, if this is, you know, taking a little more time because a lot more mixing, you can uh, get uh, the paint uh, retarders that slow down the drying process. There's also a golden open. They're called open. There's an open uh, medium. I just add a dot to that, and I think I will in the future. Uh, or you can use the... Um, the uh, blue mechanics paper towels on a palette of some kind covered up with a tissue paper and then put in your color palette. That's the other method I've used as well. And then uh, you can maintain your palette for a few days, but it only lasts a few days and then it turns a, it goes um, sort of jelly-like. I really don't like what happens to it, but it's better than drying up on the piece of glass like I have. So I've learned how much to use. And then if I do have paint left over, uh, which I do here, I think, at the end, I don't show it, but uh, I made some really cool collage papers with that on newsprint paper. So um, needing some more of the white, really liking the Liquitex Basics, by the way. They come in those squeezable tubs. They're so great. They don't seem to clog up like the golden ones do. I don't know why. So really um, noticing that that was very pink. And I want to put that there and up there, uh, but that's okay. So I'm covering it. And of course, I end up covering that really nice piece of collage. But this layer goes on and dries uh, more translucent. And I really like that covering up some of that orange. And then I want to come in with an equal value of the blue that I mixed over there, the very light. And then paying attention to, of course, the different sizes, keeping difference in size, especially those horizontal uh, areas that are going across. And I'm just playing with light and dark contrast here getting some texture. Uh, not really worried about the composition. This is more of a play. What colors do I like? What did I learn from what I just did on the left? Um, oh, and then, yes, really liking that. And that, that's why I like the, the chisel brush here. I don't know if it's, if it's the proper name. Anyway, um, it makes some really nice even edges. I thought I'll just throw those in. But if you're using this as a reference, uh, the shapes, uh, you can come in with any different kind of shapes, but your reference is, okay, how did those two colors look together? Um, and I know that in the future, uh, for any interesting shapes that I might, that might, that I like with those colors, I'll uh, make a little card, maybe draw them, tape them in uh, this page. And I even uh, might throw in a tab, throw a, 
uh, one of those tabs on the page so I can uh, find uh, and I'd, I'd mark it orange turquoise palette. And when I'm looking, I have all my notes. So it, it looks like, a, it almost looks like an interior designer um, or those color books, uh, the color Bible. Um, this is where I sort of got the idea. I thought, okay, um, I need to see these in different ratios. And I need to see it at some kind of attempt of a finished piece so that I would have a clearer reference for, oh, yeah, okay, this is what I did in some direction into what uh, I might want to create on a larger canvas. So that's, that's my thinking behind this. And as you can see on the top, I had a turquoise on peach, and now it's the peach on turquoise. I didn't like it. It was too dark. So I'm lessening the contrast by adding a little more white to that and going, uh, going over it again. So there's a lot more in this video uh, than just my abstract journal page uh, videos, which I just love. And uh, I'll definitely be making more and more. And um, I'm really liking uh, combining um, I am positive affirmations to um, energize, let's say, the substrate, whatever that might be, as a guide for my lines and shapes, and then layer by layer put it in. But uh, uh, those words and numbers uh, really activate that canvas. So here's the piece of, here's the pastel. And I thought, wow. I've got this brown pastel that looks really cool. So instead of leaving the circles uh, just plain, I threw that in and made some really nice line. I know that uh, uh, the line was missing, and now you can see those colors really better as I move them up to the camera. Okay, so I've got a lot of mixing going on on my palette. Really liking this. Um, and this was just the first one that I've done this way. So um, um, you're going to be following, following my journey, and I'm going to be sharing my discoveries, as I said, as I go. And uh, you're learning along with me. <laughs> and it's all a wonderful learning process. Wow, I'm really loving that color I'm making there. It has that burgundy... Um, close to brown, but yes, it really looks nice. It's just slightly lighter or less saturated. Very nice. And one thing I noticed with this page, now that all the colors are relating to each other, it has a really nice feel. I didn't leave a lot of white at the top. I think the strongest, whitest values are in those circles on the collage paper. But uh, other than that, I think it has a really nice feel to it. So I'm just going to title them Exploring Color Number One. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.